Sustainable Use of Resources. In this lesson, we'll look at the science and engineering practices of analyzing and interpreting data, as well as engaging in argument from evidence. We'll explore the cross-cutting concepts of stability and change. The Earth's resources. Humans use the Earth's resources for many purposes, from creating materials such as clothing and buildings, to generating energy such as using gasoline to fuel cars. Some resources are considered non-renewable, meaning that when we use them up, there will be no more produced. Others are called renewable, meaning that more can be grown or generated. Natural resources can be supplemented by agriculture. Humans can also make synthetic versions of some resources to help reduce the amount of natural resources used. Energy resources from the sun. The sun is the original source of most energy resources. Plants store the sun's energy through photosynthesis and that energy is transferred up the food chain. The energy in these resources came from the sun. Which of these resources is renewable and which is non-renewable? Coal, oil, and natural gas would all be considered non-renewable resources because they regenerate slower than the rate at which we are using them. Biomass and food, as long as we are being conservative about how we use them, are renewable resources. Non-renewable energy resources. Oil, coal, and natural gas are examples of fossil fuels. They were formed from biological deposits over the course of millions of years. The amount of fossil fuel on our planet is limited. Fossil fuels are non-renewable because they cannot re be replaced and will eventually run out. Use of fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are very important and have many uses. Can you name some of the ways in which humans use fossil fuels? They are used to generate heat and electricity to power our businesses and our homes. They are used as fuels for our cars and airplanes. And they can be used to make plastics, medicines, packaging, fabrics, and even televisions. We use fossil fuels for a lot of different materials. Atmospheric carbon dioxide levels. Atmospheric carbon dioxide levels are measured around the world to detect global trends in this greenhouse gas. The standard measurement used is parts per million, or ppm. In 2010, levels were around 390 parts per million. This means for every million parts of air, 390 parts were carbon dioxide. The proportion of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere varies due to human activity. This graph shows the trend in atmospheric levels of carbon dioxide in the last 50 years. Notice the gradual upward trend. It's important to recognize that within each year there are seasonal changes in the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Dips in carbon dioxide levels corresponding to spring and summer months when plants are growing and photosynthesizing more rapidly. Sustainability. All of the Earth's natural resources are limited. Sustainability is the ability to provide for our needs without damaging the earth. Humans will always need resources. Our use of resources can be sustainable or unsustainable. Unsustainable uses of resources can damage the environment and lead to pollution. Using resources sustainably means using them in a way that prevents them from running out and avoids causing damage to the environment. It can also mean reducing how much we use and reusing, as well as recycling, used materials. 
natural resources, and agriculture. Every year when crops are harvested, they remove some of the nutrients from soil. Over time, this will affect the soil quality if the nutrients are not replenished. To replenish the nutrients in the soil, farms can use manufactured fertilizers, which require fossil fuels in their uh, manufacture or manure, which is naturally occurring and renewable. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of using manufactured fertilizers versus manure? Which is more sustainable and which is more effective? Improving agriculture using chemistry. How can chemistry improve agricultural processes? Using knowledge of chemistry in agriculture can make agricultural processes more efficient, which can reduce the use of non-renewable resources. Fertilizers are made using ammonia, which is created through a series of chemical processes called the Haber process. By studying how various conditions affect chemical reactions, scientists can reduce the energy needed for the process and improve the yield. This means creating a more desired product using less energy. Food scientists and chemistry. Food scientists have a wide range of responsibilities, from making branded ice cream taste more luxurious than supermarket brands, or to making sure we have clean water to drink. Food scientists use their knowledge of the chemistry of food for a wide range of purposes, including to develop new chemicals to increase crop production and yield, and defend against pests and protect the environment, to create new and improved flavors of the foods that we eat, and to process, package, preserve, store, and distribute foods and drinks to make them safe economical, and sustainable. Supplementing natural products. Natural substances exist in nature, in the earth, in rocks, as well as in plants and animals. Synthetic versions of many substances can be made in a laboratory. For example, vitamin C is naturally found in oranges. Scientists can make synthetic vitamin C from glucose. Alcohol is, a natural, is naturally made by fermenting fruit. Scientists have developed a way to make alcohol from ethane using steam in a process called hydration. Humans get vitamin B from the food that we eat. Synthetic vitamin B is found in vitamin tablets and can be made from coal. So why are synthetic uh, substances made when natural ones exist? Natural ingredients can be scarce or expensive. It may be easier and cheaper to produce a synthetic version in the lab. Sometimes more of a substance is needed than is supplied naturally. For example, folic acid is used in the body to make and repair DNA. Synthetic folic acid is given to pregnant women to make sure they have enough for their growing baby. Obtaining raw materials. Obtaining raw materials from the earth by quarrying and mining causes environmental impact. For example, Explosives are used to extract limestone from rock in a process called blasting. The noise scares wildlife. Blasting also leaves large craters in the rock face which ruins the landscape. Much of the limestone is then transported to cement factories near the quarries and the craters can be filled with rubbish and used as landfill sites. Ways of reducing the use of resources. Metal, glass, ceramics, and most plastics are produced from limited raw materials. For example, plastics are made from crude oil, which is a fossil fuel. Much of the energy used in the processes to form these products also comes from limited resources, 
For example, coal is used in the extraction of iron in the blast furnace. Raw materials can be conserved by reducing the amount of resources we use, reusing resources wherever possible, or by recycling. Recycling is a good way to reduce the amount of resources we use. Recycling turns waste into usable material again. This means that fewer raw materials are used and less energy is used to process the raw materials. For example, glass bottles can be recycled. The glass is sorted by color, then crushed into small pieces. Any bits of other materials are removed from the glass and then it is melted. It can be made into new glass bottles. What other resources can be recycled? Paper, some plastic, aluminum, batteries, just to name a few. So what are other benefits of recycling? Recycling also prevents potentially useful materials from ending up in landfills. Recycling can help the environment by limiting the amount of space needed for landfills, as well as reducing the amount of raw material that needs to be gathered from the environment. Recycling metals. Almost all metals can be recycled into something new. Metal recycling helps to protect the environment as fewer raw materials are needed. For example, aluminum extraction happens at about 900 degrees Celsius. This requires a lot of energy, and this comes from burning fossil fuels. Scrap aluminum can be melted down at around 660 degrees Celsius. This means less energy is needed, and therefore we can save some raw materials as well as reducing the amount of carbon dioxide we are releasing. Price of copper. What does the graph tell us about the price of copper and how it has changed? Notice the trend in the data. There have been substantial increases in copper prices since about 2005. Why do you think this may have happened? Could it be that mining copper is a little more difficult than it used to be? Or our ores are less percentages of copper? What will happen to the price in the future if we continue the way we are? Obviously, with increases in the amount of copper, we can suspect that that trend will continue. So finding different ways in which we can manufacture copper or ways in which we recycle it may be beneficial in the future. Reduce and reuse. The most sustainable change that we can make is to reduce our use of materials. Some products are wrapped in much more packaging than is necessary. If the packaging cannot be reduced, the next best thing is to reuse it. Some packaging materials can be used several times. For example, you could reduce your use of plastic bottles by reusing and refilling them. What other things can be reused? 